They know. They know. They know. And you must listen to them. Who? The experts. And yet every day we're told something new because they didn't know. Okay, but now we have been waiting for the person that could possibly have the answers. And yet some of us are questioning her so-called expert status. And that makes her upset. How dare you? Uh, apparently, Greta Thunberg is not only an expert on climate change, but now she's an expert on COVID-19. Okay. Well, apparently, Greta's been feeling a little left out, uh, you know. It's tough to be a child star when you grow up and the cuteness wears off and nobody then is interested in seeing you be cute anymore because, well, you're not a child star anymore. And so as Greta's popularity has taken a hit during, oh, I don't know, while we're dealing with real problems, uh, CNN thought it would be a great idea to bring her out of retirement and make her a so-called credible voice and input into moving forward on coronavirus and our actions and what we should be doing as a country in the world. And so they wanted to make her part of their panel. And immediately they got backlash from just about every other media source, including media sources that would normally be friendly to CNN. And they've taken a little bit of umbrage to that because after all, Greta's an expert. Well, she's telling us to listen to the experts. Well, first of all, let me ask this simple question, and I've hinted at it before, and I'm going to come right out and ask it. What makes an expert an expert? Just because somebody has done something for 20 years doesn't necessarily mean they're any good at it. You know, when somebody tells me, I have 20 years experience at doing, you know, fill in the blank. And my question is always then, well, what were your results? What, what have you produced? 20 years of doing that, what have you actually accomplished? What have you done? In fact, I'll use my own calling, profession, whatever term you want to give it. Um, I happen to work in two arenas as a pastor and in, I guess you would call it, media. I been involved in radio since I was a teenager. I have been a disc jockey in just about every music format other than hip-hop and jazz. Personally speaking, I like 50s and 60s rock and oldies. That's me. Uh, I've done talk radio. There are a lot of people that try to do talk radio. A lot of them aren't so good at it. And just because they've been doing it, doesn't mean they're good at it. I know a lot of people in the ministry, a lot of pastors, they've done it for years. I'm not questioning their sincerity, not questioning their love for the Lord, their love for people, but some of them just really aren't any good at it. And so it doesn't really matter how many years they've done it, that doesn't necessarily mean they're an expert. So when I hear the news agencies telling us we need to listen to the scientific medical experts. Again, I ask the question, what makes someone an expert? Shouldn't it be results? And shouldn't it be results that actually produce something beneficial? So just because somebody has done it 20 years doesn't necessarily mean that they're an expert. It just means that 20 times they've been a rookie. 20 times they have... Uh, started their job in a given year and it was just like day one all over again. Lots of mistakes, lots of oops, lots of having to explain, lots of having to learn on the fly. That doesn't make you an expert. Dr. Fauci has been called an infectious disease expert. Why? Because he got his creds during the AIDS epidemic and yet Everything that he talked about then, everything that he predicted then, never happened. 
so much of what he did has been discredited, disproven. That said, even Dr. Fauci was forced to admit before the Senate hearing that even he can't guarantee that when they finally mass vaccinate us that they're going to do whether we want it or not, forced vaccination, it's going to happen. Even he said, well, it's still no guarantee you won't get it. Okay, so why are we going through all this? What, 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 why? Why does he, and again, I go back to what Rand Paul said. Why is he the be-all, end-all? You know, CNN attacked Rand Paul. How dare Senator Rand Paul question the credibility and the ability of Dr. Fauci? May I remind CNN that Senator Rand Paul actually is, in real life, a doctor. He doesn't just play one on TV. He is one. He actually has a degree in medicine. He has studied, are you ready for this? Science. Oh, but because his conclusions are different than Dr. Fauci, Dr. Fauci automatically becomes the expert. And that was the point that Rand Paul was trying to raise. What about these other medical professionals, these other experts, these doctors who are working even right now on the front lines, actually treating people? Dr. Fauci's not. He's sitting in his office and in his lab with his team of little scientists, and they are looking at data, and they are looking at models, and they are talking about this, and they are talking about that, and basically, they don't want a runny nose left on the planet. Okay? But that's not even remotely reality. The doctors who are actually in the hospitals touching the infectious, diseased individuals and are treating them, and they are reporting back. We're finding out that this does work. We're finding out that this doesn't work. And yet, if it doesn't fit the Fauci expert narrative, it gets discredited. And Rand Paul's point was pretty simple. Hey, since you keep admitting, Dr. Fauci, that we're still learning, we still don't know, Mr. Expert, we still don't know, then shouldn't we be hearing from more than just you? Shouldn't we get other experts involved and start piecing together what is working? Well, Shazam, Batman, that makes perfect sense. But of course, CNN lampooned that. And then they turn around and they make Greta Thunberg a voice on their expert panel regarding moving forward on coronavirus. I I'm sorry, where is her medical degree from? Oh, that's right, she doesn't even have a diploma. Because remember, she dropped out of school to save the planet. She's been sailing around on her solar-powered yacht. Uh, Christopher Columbus used to call those sailboats. Uh, she's sailing around on her solar-powered yacht and, and pontificating about climate change. And now she's saying, we need to listen to the experts. We need to listen to the experts about coronavirus. And we need to listen to the experts on climate change. We need to listen to the experts. Why? The experts have been wrong. Now, of course, their go-to defense line is, well, we're still learning. We're still learning. Gee, it must be great to be wrong and constantly having to learn on the fly and be called an expert and command top dollar and be in charge of the fact that you're producing the vaccine that's supposed to help all of us and you've got the patent rights to it and are going to make money into infinity and beyond and you're still, you don't know. What expert opinion are we supposed to follow on coronavirus? Remember who, the World Health Organization, initially told us back in February and even into March that coronavirus could not be spread human to human. Okay. Then we were told, yes, it can. So the experts were wrong. <laughs> And they keep saying, well, we keep learning more. We keep learning more. Okay. Okay. Well, learn this. Georgia and Florida reopened. And they got blasted by the media. In particular, Georgia. The governor of Georgia even raked a little bit by our own president. Why? Because his experts were telling him, Mr. President, this is dangerous. At first, President Trump praised Georgia. Then, one meeting with Scarf Lady, 
And the president came out and he said, I don't agree with Georgia reopening the way they are. And yet their numbers are going down, 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 down. When Governor DeSantis in Florida reopened the beaches, everybody said, that's it. People will die. They'll die. And now we're finding out the numbers are going down, 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 down. There are studies out there, again, Dr. Fauci doesn't talk about them because they don't fit his narrative of the vaccine and the medication treatment that he wants Americans to prescribe to, Psst, because he and Bill Gates have a financial interest in it. Uh, there are a lot of experts out there, a lot of medical professionals out there talking about that what they have learned regarding coronavirus is it's not necessarily a respiratory issue completely like the flu and pneumonia, but it is something that really is uh, uh, involved in the lungs. And if you have a vitamin D deficiency, ding, 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 uh, you could be in real trouble. So they have been recommending take vitamin D. I take vitamin D every day, have been for years. I take four vitamin D tablets every day. Now I've done it personally, uh, for my my energy and I've noticed it does affect my mood um, call it seasonal grumpiness whatever you know endless days of gray skies and and cold tend to kind of bum me out a little bit uh, vitamin D has been something that it just it keeps me sharp keeps me alert and I've been doing it for years and I find out now that vitamin D plays a big role in your recovery or even immunity to all of this who knew? Good to know. Glad I'm already doing it. Explains Georgia and Florida, the sunshine state and the state that borders a sunshine state. As it gets nicer, as it gets warmer, as people are outside, that's a great source of vitamin D. Ding, 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 ding. But the experts, we got to listen to just these experts and not, not all the experts, just the hand-picked chosen one experts the ones that when they walk into a room the angelic choirs of heaven begin to go ah, 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 dr fauci oh for crying out loud honestly i really do hope that the new normal when we come out of all of this and you know we're sitting in restaurants that were surrounded by clear plastic shower curtains because that's what the restaurants came up with so that we could eat you know, at some point, I am just waiting for this insanity to end, and I'm hoping that when it does and people look back on so much of this, they'll go, what were we thinking? <laughs> well, that was the point. You weren't. You were reacting out of fear. And that is the reason that the fear mongers keep trying to every day stir it up, and now there's a new strain of coronavirus, and it's going to kill and wipe out children. You know, there's a reason that there's been, what, only five or six child fatalities directly from coronavirus, kids have a naturally high level of vitamin D. So see, as we learn, but it's amazing, we're not applying everything we learn. We're only applying what a certain few say that they are learning. And yet they are the ones that have been wrong every time. It's like getting a gig as a weatherman. It's the only occupation that I used to think you could be wrong literally every single day of your life and have guaranteed job security. And now apparently you can be a health expert and be wrong and still have job security. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. And again, I know some of you are dying to comment right now and you will about the new world order and the setup, and we, we get all that. We get all that. I do get all that. Um, somebody took issue with me yesterday because I, in talking about the five on faux pas news, formerly known as Fox News, well, you didn't mention Juan Williams. Were you quietly admitting that you let, oh, please, give me a break. I haven't been to talk extemporaneously, kind of off the cuff. Juan didn't factor in because Juan is a moron. I, I mean, Juan is just a, a, come on. 
He's an NPR reject. I mean, they fired him. And for whatever reason, Fox thought it would be a great idea. Hey, let's fire the guy that even public broadcasting didn't want. Um, you know, that, that'll be a great fit. He's there in and, and Fox's mind because part of what they try to do is make the news a little bit entertaining. Um, you know, it's supposed to be that old, what was that old CNN point counterpoint format that they tried to do? Uh, that's what Juan is there. He's he's supposed to be the liberal spin, and then these ones over here, they're the conservative spin. And yet the more Fox evolves, you're finding that they're all kind of got a liberal spin, and so Juan has to go even farther left so that they can set up, and I think it is part of what Fox News does. I've said it before, and I'll say it again. I talk about this a lot on my radio show. They are controlled opposition. They're still part of the mainstream media. But this is a carrot that gets dangled to conservatives. Watch Fox. It's conservative. And they had conservative voices. That's what drew the audience in. And now we're watching that those voices have gone away. And some of the ones who really were being conservative, and I think overall Sean Hannity is probably a good guy. I think he's a little in over his head. I don't, I, and he's five line Hannity. He repeats the same five lines over and over and I get sick and tired of him making an endless monologue. And then every guest that he has on after that, he basically, his questioning centers around, hey, did you agree with what I said when I said this? Hey, did you agree with what I said when I said that? Please, Sean, please. And again, even Sean, who I do think learns the truth, knows the truth, and would like to pontificate it. He's only goes so far because, after all, he's under contract and he likes the money. Now, Tucker Carlson does seem to push back against the narrative, and he goes places on his program. I, I appreciate Tucker. That said, the rest of Fox News, it, it is really pretty much just mainstream media, uh, it's very apparent that Fox overall disenchanted with the president and, you know, th those five clowns at five, sorry, I, I don't have time for that nonsense. I just, I just don't. So don't, don't make comments down there that you, you secretly like Juan Williams. Oh, please. No, what I like is the truth. What I like is the, the, the truth and so, as Fox News also plays into the narrative of the danger, we got to listen to the experts. Rah! Uh huh. Uh huh. Because again, which experts? Well, the handpicked experts. Louis Black, comedian, satirist, uh, shall we say, life observationist, if I just coined a new phrase. Asked several years ago in one of his routines, is milk good for you or not? And it was like an awkward pause, and, and, and it was like nervous laughter, and he said, I rest my case. He said, when we were kids growing up, we were told, drink milk, drink milk, drink milk, it's good for you. Now we're told by the far left, especially those in the climate change, we can't have farting cows, they're emitting greenhouse gases, we'll all die, and dairy's not good for you. Well, let's be real clear here. Yes, I am a Christian. And so the Bible does tend to affect my worldview on things. God gave us cows. God made the cows to give milk. We're to drink milk. It, it has calcium. It has vitamin D. It's good for you. Now, is too much of anything bad for you? Well, duh. <laughs> but now... Uh, Edie Falco, who played Carmela Soprano on the TV show The Sopranos, she's all upset that Governor Cuomo is talking about giving a $25 million bailout to the dairy farmers of New York. And she said, don't do that. Don't. Tony, Tony, don't you be bailing out those dairy farmers. They need to convert. They need to do something else. They need to grow that. They need to grow that. You know, typical individual, I'm being kind here, She's grown up in the city, apparently, her whole life. Probably never ventured to upstate New York. I lived in upstate New York 40 years of my life. I can tell you. Um, first of all, it is not flat ground. It's the foothills of the Adirondack Mountains and the Catskill Mountain region. So farmland there goes like this. So you aren't going to be able to have hundreds and thousands of acres of things like corn and soy, etc., etc., etc. 
It's dairy country. That's what it is. It's dairy country, dairy farms. I love how people who have no, here you go, expertise in something, yet they give their opinion, and right away, their expert opinion needs to be believed. Wow, Edie Falco, Carmela Soprano says we should stop subsidizing dairy farms. She's right. And what becomes of these dairy farms? She has no idea that that is a chunk of the upstate economy. You take that away into an area that is already repressed and never come out of an endless recession, which is upstate New York, it would kill it completely. Not everybody can sit by the highway and just sell jugs of maple syrup, Edie. They need to take care of their families. Not everybody wants to work at the Walmart Supercenter, Edie. Milk is good for you. But again, these people, they throw out their expert opinion. We have experts. They don't know if milk's good for you or not. You need to drink soy milk. There's no such thing as soy milk. Almond milk. There's no such thing as almond milk. It's almond juice. This is where I agree completely with Lewis Black. Uh, it, it, you don't milk an almond. You don't milk soy. <laughs> See, again, experts told us we're killing the planet by taking trees down. We need to have plastic bags in our grocery stores to save the planet. And then, Shazam, Batman, now we're told, if you're going to be a green-friendly supermarket, stop using plastic bags. You're killing the planet. Paper or hemp. <laughs> but again, this is the experts. This is the experts. Can't have plastic straws. I, I remember as a kid, we used to have the paper wax-coated straws, and then plastic became the thing. Okay. Plastic ones work really, 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 really good. Paper-coated and wax, not so good. <laughs> they just don't. They get soggy. They're na nasty. And so every couple of years, these so-called experts, they change what they tell us. We're listening to people right now. The news narrative is, well, if we had had some cohesive type of leadership out of Washington and from the president, these states wouldn't be flailing and reopening and what to do. And it's the president's lack of failure. Um, I, I seem to recall that the president had made it clear initially he was going to set the date for the national reopening of America. He wanted it to be Easter. And immediately, governors pushed back, led by Governor Cuomo of the People's Republic of New York. Donald Trump is not a king. Yeah, and you're not a little czar dictator either, Cuomo. But the president came out and said, fine. We're going to provide a general list of guidelines of what states need to do in their reopening process, but each one of you states, each one of you governors, you know your state, your people, your regions better than we do, you go ahead and manage it. You know, poor president, he's darned if he does and darned if he doesn't. Damn. <laughs> but again, the experts, the experts. And now Greta Thunberg, the girl who doesn't even have a high school diploma because she's a high school dropout. She's an expert. She's an expert on climate change. She's an expert now on infectious disease. And she's telling us to listen to other experts. Well, I hope the experts that she is challenging us to listen to are actually expert at something. And they haven't gotten there like a Fauci because they have some political clout. They have played the game. They have done the one hand washes the other. They have lived off of federal grants, tax dollars, and now they are about to privately profit by putting their names to the vaccines, which are a coming. And don't worry about the vitamin D. Don't you listen to these guys. Well, these guys on YouTube, they're not expert. But Greta is. Give me a break. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I hope that you got something out of this. Give us a thumbs up and a like. Spread this on your social media platforms. Who knows? We might be considered infectious. You might have to wear a mask over your ears to listen. But that said... 
please subscribe to the channel check your subscription status sometimes YouTube does pull it whether you realize it or not and smack the bell to get notification of my rants but even that's not enough you got to click all otherwise YouTube will decide if and when to ever notify you yeah and we know how often they'll do that for us hey thank you so much I really do read your comments I really do appreciate you thank you for helping us to grow this channel